In the superconducting state of a metal, we find a gap in the electron energy levels. Now, this indicates that the conduction electrons have bound states. The smallness of the gap signifies that the attractive force which binds them is weak. We may rule out a binding force which holds the electrons to the positive lattice ions. If that were the case, the material would, like insulators, have high resistance. But we know that the superconductors have zero resistance. So we conclude that the electrons are bound to each other. Although the last word may not yet have been spoken, the most successful model proposed so far assumes that the electrons become bound as pairs. This has in fact been experimentally proved in lead and in tin. It was shown that the magnetic flux trapped by superconducting rings is quantized. The rings used were very small and the quantum of trapped flux was actually measured. Its magnitude clearly indicated that its carrier is an electron pair. Now, the electron has spin quantum number one half. Consider a quantum mechanical system of particles with half integer spin. The Pauli exclusion principle then requires that each particle of the system must be in a different quantum mechanical state. This is just what we believe to be the case for the conduction electrons in the normal metal. On the other hand, the requirement does not apply to a system of particles whose spin quantum number is an integer. In that case, there is no limit on the occupation number of each possible state. In the theory of superconductivity based on bound electron pairs, it is shown that the most likely pair to form is that one in which the paired electrons have opposite spin. So, a pair has zero spin, and even zero is an integer. In other words, a pair, in some way, behaves like a particle of integer spin. This line of reasoning makes the pairing of electrons a plausible model for superconductivity. Let me put it this way. Suppose that in a piece of metal, the conduction electrons tend to become bound in such pairs. Then, if the temperature of the metal is sufficiently low, these bound pairs may form, in macroscopic numbers, into a giant quantum mechanical many particle state of low energy which may extend over the whole sample. From this point of view, the superconducting phenomena, some of which we showed you earlier, become the observable properties of this state. One proposal for the nature of the force which tends to bind conduction electrons to each other in a metal is the following. It involves the lattice of positive ions. Now, this lattice is not perfectly rigid. The negative charge on a passing electron can start a vibration in nearby positive ions. The electron moves swiftly by, but the ion is heavy and vibrates relatively slowly. A little later, a second electron passing the vibrating ion is affected by this local elastic distortion of positive charge. If it arrives at the right phase of the vibration, the force on it will be, in effect, an attraction toward the first electron. The theory based on this model has had considerable success in explaining properties of superconductors.